I mean, this is a very uh, great honor and great pleasure. You know, last night I couldn't sleep because I was looking forward to meet one of the, you know, uh, South African music icon. I'm talking about the arranger, composer, and prolific uh, piano player, uh, Mr. Tembam Kize. Yeah. I was preparing the questions yesterday, what to ask, where to begin. It was so difficult. <laughs> I must say it was a difficult one because I've known your work for a long time. And I had a privilege of working with you, you know. So I was like, ah, should I prepare? I th I don't think I need a preparation because mm. I know you uh, personally mm. and musically, you know, and I know what tickles you. So we're just going to have a conversation. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's good yeah. to be here. Yeah. Mm. So I want to I wanna talk about you before, um, because I'm here to talk about uh, the guitar players of your time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. And but before I get into the guitar, uh, someone might ask, "Who is this?" Oh. You know. Yeah. So, um, um, I, I mean, I, I know you're from the you're from the west. How was it to grow up in KwaZulu Natal? Yeah. Um, thanks for inviting me. I think this is v very important work you're doing. Yeah. Well. <coughs> yeah. Well. Um, as you've said, I come from KZN. Um, my father comes from a place called Umbumbulu, uh, uh, South Coast, and uh, I grew up in a township called Umlas. I was born in 1957. Um, I grew up in a place where, you know, there was a lot of music in the township, and um, I, my father was a choir master. But unfortunately, we did not get to see him in action. But uh, <coughs> uh, he wanted his kids to follow suit, I suppose, because he took my siblings, my elder siblings, to my aunt, Aunt uh, Audrey, Mkiz, uh, Mam Kiz in Guban. Uh, may God bless her soul, who used to teach Abantuan around um, Mlas. Uh, voice and piano, and uh, I've always wondered. Would he, uh, I wonder would he, how much was he charging, or if she was charging at all? So I, I think there were those people, you know, when we grew up. I think Basasa Kona Namanje, you know, who would give uh, the gift of music mm. uh, almost for 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 nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm reminded here of, of one of my great mentors, Ubabu Victor Antoni. You know, he would sit us down and uh, tell us, you know, about the theory of music and blah, blah, blah. As a result, I learned a lot from that man. For, I never paid him a cent. Wow. Yeah. And that was the yeah. culture. I mean, like, yeah. uh, that was the culture back in the day. I think mm. even even myself, mm. I only knew that people, they get to pay to learn music. Yeah, yeah. When, when I was older, yeah, we yeah. used to get free lessons, right, from our, our neighbors mm. and so forth. So now, where, f from your child, f from the inception of you playing, mm. uh, who who did you see? Who was your inspiration? Who said to you, uh, that, that made you to go and look for the keyboard yeah well so uh, to go back to um, aunt audrey so i was taken to aunt audrey and then was, was where i started my my, oh. my piano lessons and uh, of course uh, my my uh, big sister uja ulila was doing new voice yeah and then but the interesting thing is that uh, on my way to my aunt for my piano lessons being lula uh, uh, to uh, next to uh, my neighbors Familiar Wagasa. Okay. Uh, so then I would go there and spend that hour and, and, and go, you know, and come back and in Lula. So, you know, you can imagine, as on Twenty, Monsieur Ma Catholic. Okay. You know? So, Mang Yofunda, Piano, Lula, and Lalilum Pagang, you know, went some classical thing, and you know, so. And Napa, excellent, my neighbors, Abanya Basonte Mazayo, and Abanya, they go to Shembe Church. You know, so, so 
Well, it was a potpourri, you know, of different kinds of music. So um, I, I, guess, I think some of us are blessed to have grown up under those circumstances. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. at that time, you, you are not even thinking of jazz. And, and the, the love and appreciation of jazz music, did you develop it when you moved to Johannesburg or from home? Well, um, I went to a boarding school called Nchanga, okay. uh, Nchanga Boys uh, High School. Okay. Uh, the, this, that's when I was first introduced to Amara Records of, of, of great jazz musicians. Oh. In Abo, Oscar Peterson and, and the like. Um, <clears throat> but uh, also, uh, you know, Kuma Townships, uh, where we grew up from, there was a very uh, strong culture, Yama, Yama LPs. Mm. You know, Omuntu would go out and buy an LP, mm. and then the, the LP layer would move around. Mm. You know, and who's was why Bolig, the long Bolig in the LP, and you know, and so we got introduced to um, to EJS, and it was during the time where the organ music was big in South Africa. I don't know if you know about, yeah. about Jimmy Smith, Jimmy Smith yes. about the great uh, South African organ grinder, yeah. or, or Moses uh, Nguyen, Nguyen. You know, he's also influenced by Uche, yeah. Uche, Uche, Jimmy Smith, about yeah. Mamusheli Scott. Yeah. You know, about my guitarist and John, about Bukalu Joe Jones, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, Idris Mohammed on drums and stuff like that. And so, and then later on, we got introduced to, uh, you know, about Miles Davis, you know. So it was really a culture that was <coughs> uh, uh, learned from Amar Records. Yes. And, and, and um, you know, um, the bands that you performed, did you have like bands in like, a location? Like, because I mean, like, I'm sure when you're uh, starting to play an instrument, you right. want yeah. a fellowship, you want to play with your peers, yes, you know, yes, from yes, something. Yes. Yeah, so uh, at the boarding school where I went to, uh, you know, there were two bands. I can't remember the name of the other band, but, you know, I joined the band called the Comrades. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, you know, for obvious reasons, yeah, yeah. you know, hey, comrade, oh, yeah. uh, you know, as um, the influence the Amalo Guzana, Yama, the political movement of back in the day, you know. So, um, <coughs> so I played with a band called the Comrades, and then back at home, I played with a, a band uh, with my cousins, about uh, Vos Vosi Tusi. I think he. He lives in Berlin now. A mean, mean a, a guitar player. Okay. Yeah, a big bobber of note. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and uh, his brother Umpumelele on drums and Utami uh, Makalela on bass. So we called ourselves the Black Bees. The Black what? The Black Bees. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Black uh, Black uh, uh, Black Panther. Yes. Play consciousness, and then there was a band piece. called. Uh, there was a called. Uh, there was a a, a, a a band called the Mary Black Bit. Oh right, yeah, right, it was right a jazz yeah. big band thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, and um, so now talking about the bands, mm -hmm. and who uh, I had in the interview, who mm -hmm. uh, Peggy Cosa, right. talking about that he was playing with you in a band. Was it back home or? You know, yo, um, Ubabu Piggy Cosa, uh, we went to the same uh, high school, oh. you know, but that's not in Jang High School, in Vogozaki High School, okay, yeah, but we're not in the same class, yeah. So, um, I used to visit him a lot, La Pagua Q, okay, or, uh, I come from V section and he's from Q section, okay, yeah, so there's a lot of, uh, and uh, yeah. By the way, I did play a bit of guitar when I grew up. You know. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think I read somewhere that uh, uh, about ten percent of the people in the world have had something to do with the guitar instrument. So a guitar is a very popular instrument, but for some reason, it it, it tends to be more popular uh, with some uh, uh, musicians from uh, uh, KZ, and I do not know why. It's because yeah. after the battle of San Juan, uh -huh. uh, they left um, uh, the, the guitars and the piano. Oh, that is why the um, uh, what is what is his name? Uh, the father of Princess Magogo uh, oh. was a piano oh. player. Uh, he used to play piano as well. Oh, okay. Yes. So mm. 
I'm just, uh, you know, speaking from, you know, uh, uh, my memory uh, that, you know, I can remember vividly mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. why uh, the guitar, it was remained, I mean, it was most popular there. Mm -hmm. And um, just like, just like, um, you know, slaves in America, they first saw the instruments mm -hmm. at the master's, at the master's, master's home, house. Mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. They never owned the instruments. Mm -hmm. So now, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, white people, they had instruments, all mm -hmm. sort of instruments. That is where then um, the, what is called music and mm -hmm. uh, come from, the word. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so they say that so it was, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they say yeah. yeah, so they say that it, it came with um, the the Boas uh, guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I'm always I need to still dig deeper, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and give a a, a factual narrative about about the guitar mm -hmm. uh, being in KwaZulu Natal because mm -hmm. there are so many guitar players players who come who reside from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, like General Duze from KwaZulu Natal, mm -hmm. uh, Alan Kuela, Alan Kuela, KwaZulu Natal, mm -hmm. Temba Mukwena, mm -hmm. KwaZulu Natal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's only one guitar player who's not from KwaZulu Natal, oh, oh. Zurile Patrela. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that, right? <laughs> I, I, right. I still want us uh, to talk uh, about. Um, uh, the bands, the mm -hmm. culture of the bands growing up, and you you had a band, um, Vieti. Mm -hmm. When when was it formed? Yeah, the, 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 that band uh, has a rich history. Uh, Vieti was formed, I think, in the early eighties. Uh, it was uh, formed by the great group the Maso Brothers. Uh, my soul brothers were looking for an opening act, and uh, so they had a hand uh, in forming this band. We had people like uh, Abo Mag Matunja, I'm told, um, Abo Mututuz Makwaza, um, Raymond Mulife, and the great Johnny Thorns on, on guitar. The brain behind the whole thing, I would, I would suggest. Yeah, and in fact, they at some point they called themselves Jaws. Jaws. J A W S. I do not know why, how the name Shark. came about. Usha. Yeah. With yeah. With it. And then there are Jaws as as a bass player. Jaws oh. Latu as a as a as a bass player. Everyone speaks about Jaws yeah, as a yeah. as a main wow. bass player of that time. Yeah. yeah. So that band has a, you know a, a a rich long history. You know, and of course, uh, pe you know, people uh, uh, came in and some left the band. And, uh, uh, and then um, later on, uh, Mina Nofana Zulu, we joined the band. Who uh, was the original keyboard player? Uh, it was uh, Arthur Shabalal. Uh, so is one of the longest uh, 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 serving members of the band. Right, because um, um Shengu, I think he he must have come in after Bo or Meg Matunjwa, you know, and then live through the band until the days of Jabulani uh, Kanyil. Yeah, so that that band has a long, long, long history, but the one very important figure in that band is a gentleman called uh, Johnny Kong. Talking about Jabulani Kanyele, right. was he a leader, a, 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 um, you know, singer uh, in the band? No, Ujabu Kanyele was brought in by Ufana Zulu as a, as a drama. What? Yeah. <laughs> Ujabu Kanyele was a drama. Ufana Zulu he brought him in and said, no, man, I know this guy is a, is a singer, but, you know, he's a good drama also. And did you punch, you know, you punch. Yes. You punch. Yeah. You kick. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jabu uh, Kanyele. So we used to play with a guy called Carlton Malita as a drama. Yeah. So he left the band. And then, so, uh, so, you know, when we joined, he, he by it from Sakile, you know, who Fana, he suggested to Jabu Kanyele. So, for the longest time, we played no chabu chabu lama drums, but then you know um, we were not 
as exciting as a band, you know, because there was no front man. Yeah. So then Ufana says, hey, but, you know, you know, Ujabu is an entertainer. He can sing, and, but he's also an entertainer. He's a dancer. Yeah. So, so then uh, Ufana went and then got us, uh, the late Usilom to it. So then Ujabu gave, and then he goes front and, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a lead singer. You know, and that changed the game, of course. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and um, you know, at that time, you are in Johannesburg now. Because yes. I hear you mentioning that uh, Ufana Zulu brought uh, Ujabu Kangile into the mm. band. So mm. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you were in well, no, Of course, I was in Johannesburg. Okay. So I came to Johannesburg in the early 80s to, to play with the Sakile. You know. So Sakile came before Yes. Bayet. Yes. I played with Sakile, I think, for two or three years or so. I, I, I can't remember. I heard yeah. Don Laga say that he was, you were debuting for him. <laughs> I do not know about that story, but, okay. uh, but I, yeah. was, I was approached by... Sakile came to Deben and they were looking for a piano player. They happened to know uh, uh, about me through the late uh, Rakolo Ilibone, a producer. You know, he suggested me because I was... At that time, I was playing with a band called... Uh, Jukes Combo from Chasworth, okay. you know, from an Indian uh, township called Chasworth in Devon. Yeah. So the band that brought you to Johannesburg, the reason you left a uh, home and they're like, no, I'm oh, going to do Sakile. this thing, was Sakile. Right. Wow. And, and there's one project that um, I think it really captured my heart, the energy until... I mean, from that time, I watched it until today, mm -hmm. and I, it's still sounding fresh. Sekunjalo, Huma Sigela. Huma Sigela. Huma Sigela, that was his uh, homecoming yes. uh, concert. Yes. Uh, one of the best ever, I would say. Yeah. You know, uh, we, have, we had heard about this, uh, about Brahu uh, through the years. When we grew up, we grew up looking up to these guys, Abu Brahu, Nabo Kaifas, and uh, Nabo. Babu Jonas. So over you, when he came back to South Africa, he put together this concept called Segunjalo that uh, had uh, e Bayet and Sankomata, and he brought with him his band called Bone in the Nose. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, and I was, uh, you know, uh, he appointed me as his uh, musical director, you know, and he was you know, such a, a big shoes, you know, uh, to fill in. But, uh, yeah, it was, for me, one of the most exciting moments of, of, some, of, of some of us, you know, because we, we got to, to, to mix and mingle with the grace, like the human skill. And, of course, the, the, the band he, has, he had brought with was, uh, you know, a, a, a good, good band. Yeah. And at that time, I mean, uh, uh, have, you, have you ever directed the music before? Or was it your first gig? Uh, let me see now. I, I wouldn't <laughs> say I would. I wouldn't say I, I directed the the, the, the the music before. Uh, I need to get my facts uh, right here. But I, I'd always been interested in, in in production and putting things together and putting the music together. Yeah. You know. But he had always said, "I see you as a producer, as a as a wow. as a music maker." Wow. So as a result, he took me to EMI Studios. Wow. Um, power Studios, yes. and uh, we did some work there. Unfortunately, most of that work was never uh, released. Wow. You know, but he gave me the opportunity wow. uh, to um, to work as a producer. You know, that's where I cut my teeth actually, yeah. uh, uh, and got introduced to a guy called David Latehan, who was a, a, a sound engineer who taught me how to operate. About okay. um, um, the door, uh, uh, you know, they introduced me to the world of the technology, yes. you know, and that that's that's all humor, Sikela. Wow. He's the one who gave me that opportunity. Uh, and and mm. oh, wow, you know, like I don't know, mm. I don't know. I mean, like, mm. should I play something and um, the music goes, uh, select, you know, shuffles and play hope album mm. so after after that project was it um, uh, uh, did you produce hope as well no 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 hope was not produced by me i think he had uh, i can't remember the, the gentleman's name from america 
No, yeah. but mm -hmm. you were playing. There. Yes, I was playing there. Uh, so the 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 Temba Mkiza, the arranger. Mm -hmm. where, uh, where did when did the love of arranging music, uh, you know, was born? Well, um, you know, um, when I joined Bayete, I did not play piano. I played second keys. Oh. You know, and uh, well, that's another story for another day. But uh, you know, I was introduced to the world of um, synthesizers. And uh, got myself a, a, a Polysix, called Polysix, uh, and a, a, a Juno, blah, blah, blah. Jupiter 4, I can't remember. Yeah. You know, so that is where I learned the, the I would hope, I learned the skill <laughs> of producing. Because that teaches you about sounds. And that also teaches you about textures, you know, and... and, and uh, what to play against whatever is playing and it and also to learn to shut up mm. because the the music at that point doesn't need anything. you know anything yeah it's a rest it's, it's, it's a rest it's a tacit so 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 that's that's how i learned uh you know the and in the, the love for for arranging that's it, that's where it, it, it comes from but then i had the pleasure of of, of uh, of sitting down, Nobabu Uvik Tantoni, the the first college educated mu musician I ever met, and I was fascinated by this guy. You know, who could like, uh, you know, uh, sort of give you what was in his head, and then have the, you know all the musicians play what was in his head. And I was like, how does he do that? And then he sat me down and taught me about the theory of music now, which I knew very little about, you know, mm -hmm. and he taught me about scales, chords, construction, you know, how music works basically, you know, and for me, that, that, that man changed my life. And that's why today when we listen to your records, um, mm -hmm. to your recordings, I can hear a reham happening somewhere. <laughs> there. A beautiful reham, you know, I've learned yeah. from those records, mm -hmm. I mean, like, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the album that uh, I've learned from uh, Reham from you, it was uh, yeah, that was a song uh, by uh, was it um, uh, the Katamia group? Uh, oh, Lady Smith play one verse. Tilidida. Tilidida. Oh, and no Yeah, yeah. I loved. Oh. I, you see, Tilidida. Mm. I love the Reham that happened mm. there. That's what I was like. Hey, this man. How is he thinking this one for five and mm -hmm. putting just a reham? My music today, it has those kind of mm -hmm. reham mm -hmm. stolen mm -hmm. from you, you know, maybe stolen wow. but inspired, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the idea of, of, of a reham, it, it comes from uh, just sheer curiosity. Mm, yes. You know, I mean, uh, does it have to be this way and this way only? What yeah. are the other possibilities? Yeah. You know, if, if I have the same melody, you know, but I'm um, embellishing it with something different. Does it take away from the melody? Does it make it less African? Yeah. You know, and when uh, these these are questions we need to ask because then we we are gonna have a situation where the music is going to be stagnant. Yes. It will never move because I believe that music has somehow borrowed from other musics, yes, whether it's Mpakanga or whether it's Katamiya or Maskanda or or jazz. You know, music. It you know is uh, uh, it's it's alive. It 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 you know it 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 wants to tell us something. You know, and it cannot ignore the influences around it. Yeah. So for me, experimenting is is something that I've is always in my head. Yeah. Yes. And, and and this 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 com this talk I always hear mm. from older generation. Mm. They say that ah, you young you. You youngsters, you sound like Americans. You must sound like yourselves. Mm. But I'm like, hello. <laughs> Back in the 1930s, yeah, 19, yeah, yeah. 1950s, yeah, yeah, you were singing yeah, yeah. like, yeah. you were singing like, um, mm. you know, you know, you were playing like mm. Americans. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so yeah. why then this generation yeah. you wanna deprive them to be mm. influenced by mm. what you were influenced? Yeah, yeah. But I. But I suppose then when when that generation started uh, being consciousness, mm. that's when they wanted to find themselves and like, you know, I think maybe they are coming from that point. But uh, from a young person hearing that, that please don't be influenced by 
American music, but yet they were mm. playing mm. all mm. these big bands material mm. and being influenced. I mean, there was a band called mm. the Harlem Swing Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine mm. already yeah, yeah. that thing, mm. it has mm. an American name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. Or oh, uh, the Manhattan Brothers. The Manhattan Brothers, yeah, the, yeah. Import, the, yeah, the Ink Sports. The Ink Sports. Yeah, 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 all yeah, all yeah. that was American. Yeah. And even yeah. themselves, they do acknowledge that that they, yeah. that they are their African jazz time, mm. Amajuba mm. and Kuela, um and Dumpatanga, all that mm. is a mixture of uh, American. Hybrid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a you know it's a very interesting uh, uh, topic, uh, 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 Brabili. You know, uh, it's very important because then you know it begs the question: What's African? Yes. What's not African? You know, uh, what's American? What's not American? What's jazz? What's not jazz? You know, it's it's a it's a big big question. You know, but uh, at the end of it all, I think we should allow artists, musicians, to dream. We should allow them to to wander around and and, and find themselves. You know, especially uh, especially if you are young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Uh, you have all. Yeah. You have all your life to make mistakes. You yeah. know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, if you're yeah. young, you must you must just explore. You know, and yeah. and um, y you know, uh, I wanna I wanna talk about um, you as a producer. Mm -hmm. You produce so many r records. You know, from vocalist, mm -hmm. and you know, how many records do you remember producing? Yeah. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I, I I don't think I have a figure, at, 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 you know. But, but yeah, but uh, ah, I've 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 done uh, a few a few things. I think uh, I think you were uh, I think you were a uh, darling at Sony Sony BMG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I've done I've done a few things. I've I've done records. You no, know, Mamus Bongile, Jeff Mapaya, uh, myself, um, Andile. Um, Selegu, Nogu Kanya, the Bayete, Bayete Records, and you know, I've, I've, I've done a few, <coughs> you yeah. know, and of course, um, I've, I'm also doing um, library music, oh, yeah. music for, for television and, and, and radio, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, maybe it could be seen as non commercial music as such, yeah. but I've done, you know, maybe about seven or eight albums of, you know, of that, that nature. But talking about the TV and lab, you know library music, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a conversation I always engage my peers with that mm -hmm. music is not only on stage, right? Because yeah. we we want to be on stage, you know, and yeah. uh, but we tend we tend a blind eye on the other business aspect of mm -hmm. how can we make revenues without being mm -hmm. on stage mm -hmm. because every. Uh, Every every artist they have their peak season, you know, where they are at their pinnacle yeah, yeah, of their yeah, career, yeah, yeah, yeah. and mm. you know, five years down the line, the long more yeah, relevant. Yeah. There's a new guy mm -hmm. in the in the in the. So I guess that's what you invested in, mm. and also as an arranger, because today, as an arranger, your arrangements that 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 mm. that um, Sophia Town medley mm, 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 is okay. still executed. Those price line, but well, uh, it's well, still well. it's still exactly like yeah, that. So, yeah. what what made you to think of all those things? Were you just thinking of jazz, how to co incorporate it with Maravi? What was happening? Because I think that album, Smungi Lokumalo, at Life at mm. Market Theater, that mm. was the best album. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I mean, those if you talk, da 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 it's a very popular line, you know. I think that, but the da You'll find yeah. it in many, many, many South African uh, uh, songs. Yeah, you know, it's just like a phrase like "padu padu badada." Oh yes, you know, it's yeah. those, you find those phrases, you know, there, you know, uh, everywhere. Yeah, you know, so I think it's a, it's a question of, of the memory bank that comes back when you when you're arranging music. It's like ah, okay, and then you, you put it all together, you know, and but uh, the, that music is in, in you. You've heard it before. Yes. All right. Yes. It, it 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 exists in your head, you yeah. know. So it's a question of how do you apply it in that situation that you are in. Yeah. Because I, I listening to here to you talking about your experiences, uh, um, you you have never seen a door of a school of a of a music school. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah, no, I've never. I only went to school, uh, you know, at, uh, what, what was I, 61? <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, and to, to, to attempt my, to study for my master's. Okay. You know, I w were, you know, um, I love indigenous music. Yes. Stratamia, as you're talking mm. about till later, I mean, you know. So I've, I've always been curious about the Stratamia. And, and I'm also like that, you know, I grew up in a place where there's a lot of, you know, d different kinds of music, including the Stratamia. Mm. As a youngster, I, you know, I used to go to uh, watch um, Stratamia competitions as a, a, a primary school, a, a, a called Elindelani Primary School, where this competitions used to take place. Mm. So we'll sit there with my friends and slalele, kuze kuse, you know, and, uh, you know, after a few, uh, you know. <laughs> Beverages. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, like, hey, mkizuzo you ngiyate know, alamangu, fike kaya ngitake, you know, ngano ngitale la pana kuze kuse, you know. You know, uh, but so rather uh, explain where you come from than being uh, right. uh, fou found with evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. so I was introduced to uh, Stratamia like that, and, and, and so I've, I've, I've had a love for this music as well. So, so when I went to school, uh, you know, I, I chose to do my masters in, in this in this uh, yeah. style of music. I mean, I mean, uh, people. <laughs> They say that um, you know uh, South Africans they never document themselves right. and enough sufficiently like mm -hmm. how other Western countries they have done. Mm -hmm. And in my def in in my defense, I say that is because South Africans back then they were creating the music styles. Yeah. Today that today we are privileged to document. Yeah. Because at that time those people who were who were playing uh, penny whistles. They were not thinking of documenting. They were thinking yeah. of it was a, it was a, it was the music that was going to free them, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, to make them to forget about their daily mm -hmm. harassment from mm -hmm. the government of the day, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, when we talk about when I look at the um, the curriculum, where it's sitting right now, mm -hmm. when I walked into the classroom and I realized that there's no there, there's no enough cont content about. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, South African music. Mm -hmm. What is your take about uh, South African music education? <coughs> <coughs> well, operating in silos. Yeah. You know, th those who are making music, those who are writing about music, and those who are doing the business of music, and you know, can be d dangerous. You know, and it's not it's not good for us. Okay. I, I think we should try and see. We should learn from the past. Yes. But I, I, I think we can try and put it all together. Yes. So in other words, when a kid goes to school to study music, finally it must be taught in tandem with the business of music. Mm. You know, and uh, <coughs> with other things that have to do with, with music. Mm. You know, and uh, the thing is, we're always waiting for someone to do it for us. Mm. You know, we, 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 you're saying... You rightfully so, yes, the, the guys were busy making music. They did not have time to, to write about our craft. You know? and, and also, uh, you know, the, the Westerns, they were privileged to have all these things, you know, mm -hmm. cameras and all that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they were black uh, writers. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Todd Machigiza, he was a writer, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and he was a journalist. Um, you know, uh, you know the Eskian Pacheles, the mm. you know Don Materas, mm. the all these people. They were poets. So mm. if there was a poet, it means mm. there were people who were, who had a talent to write, but mm. they didn't mm. think beyond what um, you know people who took Miriam Makeba out of the country because mm. they were they were they were Westerns. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but um, I I think as I was saying, uh, you know, uh, earlier on, y yes, we we can, uh, you know, complain about these things, but I think um, we owe it to ourselves. Mm. To, to we have to try and do it till in and yeah. tell our stories from our own perspective, yeah. you know. And um, talking about that, I'm I'm fascinated about your <laughs> your project. You know, here yes. you are. Yeah. I. I uh, maybe I need to ask when or what did, did you even have money to do this? Maybe you did not have money. Did you go to school to learn how to do this? 
No. You know, you, you had to teach yourself. So oh. it comes from the the burning desire mm. to do something. And mm. in the, you asked me about the, mm. the, the idea of, of uh, how did I learn how to arrange music. Mm. Because I wanted to learn how to do it. Because mm. I, I, I had this burning desire to learn how, how is this thing done. You know, it's the same thing. We have to want to do these things. Mm. We have to, it has to come from, from the curiosity. Yeah. Uh, and my, curi my curiosity is on, is on, another, is on, uh, uh, on, on an, uh, another level. I must say for, for myself uh, that I'm, I'm conscientized and, mm. and uh, I'm, I'm, I have a sense of uh, par patriotism. Okay. And also um, I love politics. Mm, okay. uh, so I studied politics and mm. uh, I dropped out. Okay. Uh, to become a musician. Oh, okay. Yes, because oh. when I was studying politics, already mm. I was a musician. Oh, okay. So I already, already was playing, and oh. when I was there, I was angry that why am I being taught by white people? <laughs> yeah, but that, you know, <laughs> wow, that's 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 interesting. <laughs> when so a contestation, yeah. a contestation, mm. is, it has always been inside of me, and also I was part of the SRC. So mm. there was an African teacher who used to come into the class, Mefro Pakadi. Who uh, will say class very queer, 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 more, queer, mm. more, and I was just telling a queer, more. The youth of 1976 they fought mm. against this thing, and then mm. when I was come here, we must tell us to. Mm. Then I con uh, contestation started mm. there. That's when I became a revolutionarist. But then again, if if, if you have a problem with <coughs> saying queer, more, you're saying it's better for you to say good morning. No, well. So I was saying the British are better than the Africans. You, uh, that that <laughs> question I ask myself every yeah, day. Okay. That that question I ask myself every day. I'm like, okay, so we fought uh, against the Africans as a medium uh, language, but right. here we are. We are having a, a conversation a, in English in right English. now. Yeah. So that so that so that the people, everyone uh, can hear it, you uh, know, because Master uh, Timaji uh, is Zulu. The vendor person mm. will depend on the subtitles and so forth. So so that's why we should start the project. You go to Yipi language. Ye, ye. Uh, African language that can ah, be used. Ilu, la, 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 yeah. uh, I get to, we have uh, 12 months. Right. So this month is could be Zulu. <laughs> Next month is could be Shagan. <laughs> that other month is could be Svelda. So I'm a Zulu. That, that month no one, no one speaks uh, 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 another language. Right. Uh, so, so, that, so that we all learn. Yeah. We yeah. all learn each yeah. other's language. Yeah. But imagine, I want to, I want to say it Pitori, they have their own language too that they made. So and we have only twelve months. Right. right so right. now, so now, imagine if Zulu person on that month of April they were mm. to uh, learn Shangani, mm, mm, and then mm. white people they also learn other languages. Yeah. I think that would have. That's interesting. But you know uh, that begs the question. I'm thinking here about radio, say, say you know, to radio Zulu ukos. Uh, <laughs> how many Sutu songs can yeah. we have uh, you know? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's, you know, so this e Department of Arts and Culture has a big responsibility to address these issues. Yeah. yeah. But, but Ukozi FM, that mm. song they played only is a popular song, like yeah. is a popular song mm. that is that is playing mm. everywhere. Mm. Like, mm. and then there's a verse, a suit or somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then that's yeah. when they will feature it. Yeah. But so Linje, Ingo Mesu to... So they planted it and they left it there. So to Tina on our own, they are Kubega. Yes. Yeah. No, no. But, but if you listen to Umgana Wenen, you, you, you hear Zulu, Zulu, Zulu uh, um, you know, songs and mm -hmm. so forth, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I had an argument uh, with someone who, who is more mm -hmm. academic than mm -hmm. me, you know, mm -hmm. when I said that Zulu people, most of Zulu people, they don't want to learn other African... Uh, other South African languages, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. and it was a, it was an attack. They they thought it was an attack, okay. and this it was my observation. Okay, because me and I grew up in different places, and mm -hmm. everywhere where I was, um, a, a, a Tonga people. If you know a Tonga person can sit here, mm. he will try to speak Zulu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you Zulu person will never make an effort. I, 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 that's true. I, you know, I, I, Tonga I, people or Peri people yeah. or Tonga people, even 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 if you go in their area in northwest, mm. they will acc they will accommodate you. Bas lume, ukwene soba shega na uba correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a well trained. I'm a Zulu. You know, we we do believe we go hey and why. Maskulumi is also a saint to listen. Maskulumi is a saint. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used uh, to say they used to say that to me. You uh, give me the text, ignore it. But I don't follow so much. Ah, well, getting a pitori. But I say I'm still in toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pitori. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's time that yeah. time we talk about Zulu and uh, KwaZulu Natal. I think it's taking us to to the point of talking about you as a producer. Right. As a producer. What do you hear when you work with the guitar player? I, we, we now it's time for us to mm -hmm. talk about the, the role yeah. of the guitar. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a guitar is a very interesting instrument because of, of the, the dynamics of the instrument. The guitar is, is percussive. Okay. You know, you can, you know, I mean, think of the... Mute. When, of the mute, you know, the chaka chaka, yeah. you know, that's, that's, you can get the whole rhythm from that, mm. you know, and think of, of the range from that low E to that, you know, yeah. and so a spectrum, Sakona, it's, it's, it's a cool thing, you know, and uh, think of what you can do with the guitar, you can strum, you can play melodies, you can, it's a very dynamic instrument, you know, and, uh, it can give you different things in terms of uh, maybe I'm mastering the size of the strings, the tone, and blah blah blah. And of course, the the uh, the personality of of, of the man or of, of the lady, you know, the or the musicians behind the instrument. Mm. But uh, Mina, I like I'm a I'm a guitarist. About is space. Oh yeah. Who can, who can play uh, against and play with and uh, and give you colors, yeah. just like just like you, you when you were a, a, a second keyboard right, player. Right. You, that's what you think spacing. I, I'm thinking spacing, and I'm thinking tones. I'm thinking colors. I'm thinking, you know, a guitar player doesn't have to play <coughs> all six. Six six notes at the same time, you know, can play two notes and be so effective, and sometimes even one. But you know? but you know the uh, piano players that I worked with, they are right. always fighting for court. Ah, we are court here, yeah. When I'm busy, but I think that's part of the arranging. You know, when I when I. When I choose who to play with in a pending, I'm thinking that. I'm thinking in terms of the arranging, what is it going to give us? You know. Some there are some guitar players who occupy the whole space <laughs> by playing every beat, a big thick chord everywhere. And it's like, okay, we might as well <laughs> sit down and let him do his thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Phillips, the corner, we are Yeah, the corner, we are And then the singer, you know, <laughs> the singer is, and he goes to the singer, he calls the singer, <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, my word. Yeah, well, let's. <laughs> maybe the, the guy is good for the trio <laughs> setup, not for, for. You know what I'm saying? And indeed, some players are like that. Yes. They, 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 they do much better in the trio setup. Yes, because then they can, you know, cover your uncle Um Shah Balona, you know. Hey, uh. yo, hey, I know, <laughs> hey, I, I know what you're talking about, and and yeah. same thing. I mean, like uh, with me, I, I when when I play with the piano, yeah. sometimes I just want the piano to lay the chords, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, yeah. not not make substitutions everywhere, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. I, Give me space to breathe. Yeah, yeah. you know. We, we are all in this together. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and also the, and also the bass player. You yeah, know, yeah. can I oh. just hear the groove sitting? You yeah. know, yeah. And, and and talking about the groove sitting, I mean, that project, um, uh, you know, Sekunjalo, mm -hmm. you worked with um, one of the uh, South Africa number one, you know, guitar mm -hmm. player, rhythm guitar player, mm -hmm. Lawrence Machiza. Wow. <sighs> now that guy. That's exactly what we're talking about. That guy, you know, I mean, he produced great records, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he played 
in a way that he produced the records. Mr. Mr. Colorful, Mr. You know, Amakajet and blah blah blah, spacing, you know, and uh, he. The thing is with U U U U Lawrence. Lawrence had big ears. Yeah, he could he could hear. You know, I think he's he's one of those Okonogus or Yonke into at the same time. You know, and uh, wow. He, he was one of the greatest uh, uh, ever to come from this part of the world. So, Naye, Naye because I, I didn't have an opportunity to mm. speak to him in mm. this fashion. Mm -hmm. um, he, did he go to the school of uh, Victor Tony? Because I remember he worked yes. with Victor Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, that's so where the harmony is. Also. Yes. No, no, I think no, no, Obo Victor, Obo, Obo Lokuzan, Obo Lawrence Machis, Obo Kaya Matlangu, uh, Prince Lingwasa. You know, Sipoma School and Sika Victor Tony. So, so, and um, because the production it, it it was big, and every time the production is big, there's egos. Mm -hmm. Everyone is a superstar, right? Because there was Sankomote doing their yeah, thing, yeah, 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 yeah. and there was a guitar player who was playing with Sankomote. Yeah, yeah, a uh, Frank Liepa. Where was he from? Frank Liepa from Lesotho. Uh, uh, they, they, they had a band called Uhuru, and then later on they changed to Isankomot. But uh, I take my head off for uh, Ubrahu uh, for managing my egos. Because Ubrahu, uh, for instance, he, he requested that, you know, um, well, there are three bands here, but he would like for us to participate in everything where possible. For instance, when Isan Komota is playing, some of us find ourselves singing Ama Luguza, Ama, I saw, <laughs> Ama, I saw. Ama <laughs> dancing, me and my I two saw, left legs. I saw, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> you know, so uh, Ubrahu was that kind of a character, you know, so there will be no egos because he himself would go out and do that. There yes. was a, a, a girl called Two Patients Mtim. Yes. Right, and Brayu will be there. Bubble gum. Who was that? Yeah, oh, 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 patient some time. So Brayu will be there, and then do what? You know, singing with everyone. So I mean, baking, baking with patient some time. You know, so I mean, I mean, who are you to go out there and you know and and. And he was doing that even even with Mary Makeba, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. like you, uh, you, you, mm. you will just make, you will do collaboration, but mm. he will never leave the stage when mm. when mm. it's not her set to perform. Mm. He will mm. be there on stage yeah, with, yeah. with Mama Africa, and and uh, the the album uh, Hope. Mm. Every guitar player, I'm telling you, until now, that introduction of Lolas Machiza mm. normally. Mm. 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 Wow, Machiza. Do you know that intro? Yeah, yeah. normally. Mm. Yeah. I remember very Were well. you there when yeah. when when it was plotted? Because I'm sure that in the rehearsal it was like uh are we call it up. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian, you had a certain way of, 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 of working, you know. He would not really dictate that much. You know, he would like sort of give you an you know an, an overview of what he's looking for. So for that I think it's important to to give full credit to Machiza. Because if you were to to hear that song played by another band, it would sound different. But uh, but Umachiza, you know, Ntoyama Six, Ntoyama Kita player, and Tanda Ntoyama Six, you know, he was a monster in that thing, you know. So I think the Akelos should go to Lawrence Machiza. Where did you meet him? Did you meet him there at the uh, project uh, no. Simjalo? No, actually, we we. We had a stint with uh, Lawrence Machiza. Remember, we had Johnny Tongo, you know, and Johnny Tongo, he, you know, he would be part of the band, you know, and uh, for some other reasons, personal reasons or whatever, sometimes he would not be part of the band, you know, you leave the band, come back, leave the band, come back. And then so we had to La Lawrence Machiza, you know. A typical, uh, a typical talented artist. Yeah. Talented artist is there like that. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 we have figure a bag. 
Okay, yeah. you're like, oh, it's nearly an Ushiwe flight. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes oh. they before they like, I didn't tell you to be a, and we have a show. Yeah. You know, so they I think I think talented artists they are they are mostly like that. I don't know what happens in their head. But that's dangerous. You know, we should <laughs> not accept accept <coughs> this like well as a norm. Yeah. Because there are some talented artists somewhere else in the world who who are okay. You know. But anyway, yeah. uh who we, we first started working with Lawrence Machiza go by it, and I think it's, it's, uh, some of those gigs were happened at Gibis. No. Oh. Yeah. So uh, you, Ubra, you, Magafira, uh, Lawrence, I think was already playing with us then. Oh. But then now and, and then, oh, uh, Lawrence okay. Machiza would go and work with uh, you, Nobagiti Kumal. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Wow, this I did, I did not know this. You know, yeah. I've, there's no way I've read it. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. so uh, uh, this information is is for me yeah. w receiving it. You know, yeah. now yeah. like yeah. in real time is yeah. yeah. I'm very humble to be the the one. I'm privileged to be the one hearing this because yeah. there's no way. Uh, I mean, uh, when when I was supposed to interview Umachiza. Two weeks later, Natole called with the mm. Agasayo, you know. Right. So these conversations, mm. I wanted mm. to know which, when did he meet Brayu. Mm. So mm. he met Brayu when he was playing with you uh, mm. as as Ibayeti or mm. I think Brayu must have heard of him because Brayu he, he would have, you know, have always have you know uh, been in contact with what was going on in South Africa uh, oh. while he in a part. Mm. Because remember, he he did the record with the Soul Brothers. Yes. Uh, Mutali Pule. Yes. Uh, Mutali Pule. Mm. Right. Um, <coughs> Nobu Mamulu Guzana um, from Joy. Uh, anyway, so Obrahu has always kept in contact with what's going on in his, you know, in in in, 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 in South Africa. Um, I think he must have heard about U U Lawrence from Teta. Yes. Uh, no, no, yeah, both was Kumal. Oh, was Kumal. Was Kumal, uh, at Lulu, uh, the late uh, Wing Sikhali on vocals, and Makaya Matlangu was with Teto. Right. Didn't that, is, isn't that the lineup that did uh, Dondo? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's Dondo. So Dondo would, would have been like uh, Teta, but with Fana on bass instead of Bagiti Kumal. You know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So, so, so now the last question about Majiza. Oh. So now, uh, when Julie Sipuma uh, released the DVD, I sat home and then I watched it with my, oh. with my fellow musicians, and then we enjoyed the arrangements and the performance. And I was, as I was sitting there, I asked myself that, how is Lawrence Majiza as a producer and an arranger, be with you, you mm. as a with you, you as an arranger and uh, a producer, yeah. in the same thing. Uh, how did you manage that egotistical environment? Because usually uh, there is that, of course, because of I human mean, nature. Well, it, uh, there will always be issues like that. But you know, I must, you must remember that I would also worked with Lawrence Machiza on the album Gababo Pet Machikiza. We co-produced that album, you know. So we had worked with no, no Lawrence. With you, Masegela, you know, so we, we, we're like friends. Oh, and then okay. now and then he would come to my studio. He used to book La Pana Studio, one, okay. you know, at Japanese Town and, you know, and do some. So we, we're like friends, oh. you know, so there was, there was no room, yes. you know, for, for uh, you know, ego tripping, at, or at least as far as I'm concerned. There was okay. just no room for it. Okay. You know? I mean, it's like someone will call, come and play the piano here. You go there and this, you're hired to do that, you do that, and that's it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because today, today's 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 musicians is all about ego. It's about how many followings you have, how many bookings you have. You have uh, mm. people listening to you, you mm. and then you, you have a, a influential voice. Yeah. People they think that they can't be told anymore. They can't mm. submit themselves under under the conductor, a still mm. conductor. Unless mm. maybe you have a white mm. skin, that's when they will respect you. But yeah. um, as a producer again. Mm. I've met this guitar player, you know, when I was mm. at baseline, I was hoping that Ish, this guy, Angafi, because I wanted a gig, can do so fee, and he was running late. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, wow. <laughs> wow, okay. And this 
Kral, it's thin guy. I mean, he was. <laughs> he, didn't have, he didn't have much of a body. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. And and only now I discovered that Zoli Zoli Lee was um, born in 1957. Mm. I did not know. Mm. I mean, he looked young. Yeah, he, he looked young. Yeah. He looked mm. very young. Yeah. I thought maybe he was, really was like maybe born in 1972. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, uh. I, I was what? Because I, I had an interview with uh, his son okay. and he shared also, uh. you know, a lot of information about his father. Mm. And mm. I was just quite overwhelmed by uh, how he looked and how he mm. played, mm. Mm. you know. Um, and you worked with him in so many projects as far as i know mm, of mm. and why did you choose to work with him you know because i mean like there are so many guitar players again uh, 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 uzo, uzoli wow mr colorful you know uh, <laughs> uzoli he used to i think he has a peter macheo tanda macheo go in there quiet uh, song after song. He was that kind of a guy. Uh, <coughs> but also, he was someone who a, 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 a respect into a, a, a space. You know, um, so I also had the pleasure of working with him with project, uh, a musical that was written by uh, Uman Lalanga called Milestones uh, that uh, had composers like Umamu Swongi, Lebra, Huma Sikela, Mukali Kwapim, and Mutsu Mokhen as composers. So I was roped in as a, as a musical director for that, uh, uh, for that uh, production. So I worked with Ubra Zoli Lapon and he did a stunning, stunning job. No, the late shame. U Gloria Postman. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean like most of actually as far as I I, I remember and know, yeah. all the albums got Gloria Postman, they were recorded by Zoli Lapon. Of Pate. course, yeah, yeah. And when I wanted to work with Gloria it is fine. I get to Zoli and I say, man, you can't use me gig. Right. I say, Billy, I don't think I will work with another guitar player after Zoli. Oh shame. It took time. Oh shame. You know, bang mm. konzile akul. Oh no, because he was he he was a. Oh, how can I explain into Gaga? He was a very supportive musician. Mm. You know, he would. It is. He also had the lamad level of support a young into enzakalayo around him. You mm. know. And also a pleasure to work with, mm. you know. Uh, but, and also, uh, Uzoli had into yama yama gadget. Mm. You know, he used yama gadget tastefully. Mm. Yeah. So, so will you say that all that generation of uh, guitar players, for them to play in spacing? Because when I listen to American R and B, there's a guitar player by the name of uh, you know. Uh, Paul Jackson Jr. Mm, mm. Do you think that they were influenced by the Paul Jackson Jr. of that day? I'm not sure. I can't really vouch for that because I never had that conversation with them. You know, I never asked them. But the only guy I can tell you, you know, I've had this conversation now because I, I, I spend more time with him than the rest of the other guys. Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't know. You know, I, yeah. But. The reason I'm asking this is because when I'm listening and my ears, they, they, they're like, oh, this sounds like this, you know. Uh, it's like, I mean, for the first time we hear the MOOC mm. sound mm. in the recordings is, be is because of you. <laughs> 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 we didn't hear MOOC in the thing. I mean, yeah. it was not there in the 1950s. Okay. You know? yeah. It was not there yeah. until, until I heard from you, from the recordings. Uh, Tamam Kize brought the MOOC mm. into the recording mm. industry mm. of South Africa. Yeah. So, so, so that MOOC, you didn't just get it. In yeah, no, it, that's true. I think it was influenced. Paul, Paul, Paul Jackson Jr. <coughs> I think it's possible that they, they may have, you know, earlier on we talked about the influence of the American music in South African music. So the influence comes with the names. You know, you you pick certain names, people that you you admire, and you and for, we, we have a practice, we are checker, you know, and uh, so we cannot deny the, the the fact that there will be influence. 
the mook na na no muntu ay mamela go ba chikori and stuff like that you know and wow, the, yeah. that, that's where you yeah. got, got it yes yeah. Yeah. and it was like well, but this thing ngang ngang na kumpakana you know so it was like you know but ha well, okay let's try it out you know and uh, yeah so the you know the music ya pila the music ya pila it, it doesn't leave your dollar pana but it, it borrows from us in easy into it migrates sort of, that's what migrates. you say yes it migrates as well yes. yeah and and um you know after 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 uh, his passing uh, mm -hmm. zolile patel mm -hmm. how did you feel about it because um who which guitar player did you work with because i mean i can imagine mm -hmm. yeah it was wow it was it was difficult but i then i, I work with eric palian oh yeah, yeah. Uh, i work with eric palian and eric palian he also brought in something that we spoke about uh, you know uh, eric palian is from malawi right yes so he brought in that Malawian thing, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, um, whereas Umto Jungo Choni Tonto would bring in something in you know, Maskandi Nyana and, you know, you know. So, uh, yeah, so it was, you know, after I was already back Taylor, it was like, wow, you know, uh, yeah. it would not be easy, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, and I know that feeling because you have this person, but you're still here and... Mm. Because as a producer, you mm. know the sound that you want, and that mm. sound you can't hear it anymore. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I I can imagine, you know, that how difficult is it when you look at this person like, hey, sh give me that thing, and then you're like, oh, you know what? Anyway, it's fine. But that's why it's very important not to try and uh, you know and have musicians duplicate you know uh, each other. You know what I'm saying? So when you get someone into the studio to into a band. You should always be looking forward to something different, because it's going to be different anyway, you know. But uh, but to expect him to play exactly like the you know the the other guy is not fair, you know. Because if you want to talk about Johnny Congo, can t talk about Shosholoza. But the same the same uh, <laughs> now talking about Shosholoza. Right. Um. Uh, um. Who <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, um, the guitar player from Ozo, Ozo, Zolile Batwala. Yeah. So Uzolile, he played Shoshuloza in your recording right. as uh, Tembam Kize, right, right, in the right, album. Right. How many albums of yours, personal albums, that you have recorded with him? Only one. And that was it, Shoshuloza? Uh, that, that was it, yes. <laughs> and then, and of course, the, 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 the Milestones production. Okay. Yeah. But then you see, so this, these are two different animals. Uchoni no you know, because Uchoni and I would play it with Ama Six and blah blah blah, you know, and uh, Uzoli will be will be milking that sweetness, <laughs> we, you know, yeah. So the so so you should, it's not fair to expect Uzoli to play like Uchoni no. or, or otherwise, you know. Uchoni Tono was a different, uh, you know, animal, so to speak. You met you met uh, Johnny Kongo uh, where uh, were you in a band together? Yes, uh, when I joined Bayete. So now with Sakile, who was the guitar player? Oh, Sakile? guitar player for Sakile was Menya Somatole. Oh. Yeah. But you didn't stay long in that group, right? No, I think I stayed for about three or so years. Three years is a long. long. <laughs> <laughs> but with Bayete, I stayed for nine years. Close to close close to a decade. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But now oh, I went, no. uh, I'm just interested about mm. uh, Uchoni Kongo because I've heard him playing in different in, in different um, you know setups. Uh, I heard him playing on the album Ya yeah, Dorothy Masugu, mm -hmm. and then I heard him playing in Bayede, mm. and I, I heard playing in Busokoza's album mm. Lindio Makolo, mm. and your album. Mm. Did you play on your album? Which album? No. No. No, he did. He did, he did play on, 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 on Tales from the South. Oh, yes. Uh, how do you tell you guys? Yeah. Smongi Lokumalo as well, yeah, right? Yeah, Smongi ah, yeah. yeah. You see, yeah. You see that album yeah. with Smongi yeah. Lokumalo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, so, that's where I enjoyed him the most. I was like, yeah. this guitar, doesn't, it's unique. You know, he was, he was a special musician. He was... He was my hero he is my hero he still is my hero you know here's a guy also like the rest of us who never went to, to a music 
uh, you know, school, but he had it all, you know. But then the one thing that was special about Uchoni Kong was that he deliberately wanted to sound different. He used to tell me that it's not easy to copy him. And I said, but why? He says, well, I try and open up a mean willing, a fully mean willing, so that it's not going to be easy to, to get that particular voice in. So as a result, he had a, a particular way of playing. And he also shared with me that he had a, a, a love for uh, what the piano can do and do a sustained pedal. And he says he wishes that your guitar could have a way your guns are my notes are be sustained like you'd get them from the piano. So what he would do is that <coughs> he would look for a particular voicing that would have at least one or two notes ringing whilst he's busy changing the other notes, <laughs> you know, and he says in the way that you'll have a, a sustained pedal. He was, that guy is a study. I met him a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. And um, unfortunately, we didn't get to, to talk about mm -hmm. this, you know. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. People, they walk under our noses and mm -hmm. we don't care to, uh, care to talk to them mm -hmm. about these things. Mm -hmm. But it's because maybe I was still young. Okay. I was listening to other things that, mm -hmm. you know, they met at that time, mm -hmm. you know. I wasn't mm -hmm. that conscientized enough to say, hey, mm -hmm. Because there are so many instances whereby I've been with Brayu, mm. you know, hanging mm. together many times. Mm. And I, I, did, I, I missed the opportunity to ask mm. him, Brayu, tell mm. me, what mm. was that? You know, ima mm. imagine, mm. If, mm. imagine if I was young at that time. So we have all these uh, legends uh, living under our noses and mm. our nose, noses, mm. <laughs> you know, mm. and um, we never care much to document them. Mm. Until until when they die, and then we realize that they they have died with the with the memory and mm. with the stories, mm. and the stories it can make history mm. that it was not uh, properly documented, mm. and you know um, that's how I met U Johnny Kongo, and uh, I did not know that one day I'll, I will be so much mm. eager mm. to know mm. about him when mm. I was sitting with him mm. at baseline. Mm. I had all the opportunity, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm, mm, so, mm. so you say that he was he, wa he wanted to be unique deliberately. Yeah, he was uh, deliberately unique, and uh, he. But I think it was also in search for a particular sound. You know, he he wanted to sound a particular way. You know, he. You know, he had he had a thing. For instance, if if you listen to. Uh, where he takes a solo, yes. you know, he's, 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 he's dubbing, overdubbing, mm. because he had, he had a, a thing with long notes. He loved my mm. he, he did not put Johnny Benga, 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 he was like, you know, he went, wanted to dig, to get into your soul and play long notes. And then so, so he wanted to, to sound, so for instance, the love for Le, Le Ritina, you know, okay. uh, you know, I know Le Ritina can do the, the, the gymnastics and everything, mm. you know. But uh, I think Ujuni, he, he also could play like um, o Philip Daban. So one time we were having a chat about the, the guitar playing and blah, blah, blah. And then he says, oh, Philip Daban, oh, you know, he, he, he grabbed the guitar, changed the tuning. Yes. And then, then said, no, he sounds like this, yeah. you know. Like, so that was, that was the master. Ujoni yeah. was, he was, he was the master. And also he had a, a big ears. Um, I'm not sure, I never found out if we, he had the perfect pitch, but he hated the machuna. The tuning, you know, says, no, I trust my ears. Okay. You know, this thing is, they can be deceiving. 
<laughs> well, because yeah, I mean, yeah, it is danger. You you mm. don't tune it and rely on the tune. Mm. I know. Mm. You, you, mm. After mm. after you tune mm. it, you now when we know we go to Yeah, no, he, he's very right. Mm. I tune like that as well. After mm. I tune with the tune, I, I, I my ears now they're mm. the last. Yeah, they're yeah. the judge. Right, right. <laughs> they take right. the final call. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. where was he from? Uchon, he came to Johannesburg much much earlier than than I did. You know, he was older than me, by the way. Yeah. Do you know when he was born? I wouldn't know, yeah, okay. you know, but maybe he was two, three years older than me. Ah, that's not old. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not old. Oh, yeah, it's okay, cool, I understand. I yeah. Mean, yeah. When I say that's not old, you know, my peers, they always say to me, mm. Billy, they, they always want to correct me. Like, no, Billy, mm. on your CV, on your biography, do you say, you you worked with Ubaba Temba Mkize, mm. or do you write Temba Mkize? Mm. On his CD, what mm. is it written? Mm. Mm. When when I speak in a, in a, in a musical yeah. perspective, yeah. I, I, I address that as Ubaba, um, I mean um, uh, uh, Temba Mkize, but yeah. in, engaging you one-on-one, yeah. on one, when I call you, I don't yeah. say, hello Temba, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I say Baba. Yeah. So, no, I understand. You know what I'm saying? No, it's in, it's in, in the, you know, when you write amethysts and what, dissertation and stuff mm. like that, you know, you, you can't say Dr. Bani, but, but you say, I'll address them with the second name, you know. Uh, yeah, no, but, but uh, I think he spent his uh, formative years at Peter Marisberg. But I think any advantage got Johnny Tongo is that South African Musicians from uh, uh, AKZN have a thing with into the traditional music. I can make an example. You know, so some of us who grew up in the townships, uh, in Mlaz and what have you, yes, we grew up in, but whenever a, a, a Zulu man, or not just a man for that matter, when they get an opportunity to bring, to build themselves houses, they'll always build Inlu, Kakwaoko. They will always build in where they can do something interesting about people coming from that part of the world is that my mom, for instance, was a nurse by profession, but she could brew a mean mkombot. My wife, nah, you know, she's an academic, but she can brew a mean mkombot. So, you know, if you go to uh, Bantu was a case at Jen Bethlehem, a township, and then you most likely to hear Ingo, Masay Kulu, and upon right at a township. There's that connection between Bantu was a case at N and their past. Mm -hmm. And then music is part of that. So when I listen to Johnny Tongo playing guitar, there's always that connection with that the past, with Umaskanda, with that, you know, the. What separates wow. him from the rest is that Ehake will always have that edge because it borrows a lot from that part of the world. Mm. Wow. I think. That's mm. that 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 completes my question because he mm. he sounded differently and, and even when he played um you know Maskanda, it will not sound like a mm. typical, you mm. know, uh, Maskanda kind of, a, mm. um, you know, uh, playing. I think maybe it has to do with that he had different um, uh, influences of harmony. So mm. when he mm. plays, he, he, he can explore with mm. the guitar. Mm. Mm. So Wabanya mm. Wong, I think it's so much, mm. but one, one person that mm. is not from mm. Kwazun Natal, mm. he was from that generation. Mm. Uh, let me say that generation because uh, Zolile was born in 1957. Right. Mm. So... He was from Soweto, mm. Dube. Yeah. He is, I mean, because most of the guitar players, they are from there. And you chose to play the organ and mm. the keyboard. And um, I want to say thank you so much, mm. Baba, uh, for affording us this opportunity to be with you. Saase Sakumi Slungu Lomplange. Thank you so much. Yeah, where's my dictionary? Uh, <laughs> where, where, where I need clarity, uh, I, will, I will, I will, I can still call you. I'm like, hey, I want to mm. know something because there was, there was a generation of guitar players that passed on, like, uh, subsequent to from another. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. even Prince Kupi. Everyone, oh, yeah, yeah. you worked with Prince Kupi. I 
worked with Prince Kupi, I think, in Brakaifas's band. Oh. You know, it's just it was a short stint. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You were, you, you were oh, but he was not a, he was a lead guitar player, uh, you know, uh, like re running, you know, doing some. He loved his Mpakanga. Okay. He loves him, Pakanga. Wow, he swear by it. You know, I mean, it's a pity he, you know, he <sighs> he we went rather too early. Mm. You know, he was telling me, you know, he wants to concentrate on Mpakanga. You know, yeah. yeah. I know. I have an opportunity to interview, uh, you know, um, his sister, uh, Oh, shame. So she uh, will, she will, she will uh, unpack uh, some things. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Well. So yeah. Okay. When I come here again, I will be bringing the second volume. Okay. Volume 2 of Ogovam. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> very, very important. Very, hello, Bob. Are you done? Mm. Are you done? So yeah, okay. Put it, put, oh, okay. For me, this is very important work. You know, I uh, am particularly happy about the fact that it's actually produced by, you know, a, a young musician. I don't know how, how young or how old this musician.